There we go. I've always wanted to do that. Hello, Drone Racers. I'm Mark, and today on Drone Racer 101, we're going to take a look at the Mantis 85. I've actually had this quite a while, and I'm just now getting around to reviewing it. And since then, there's a new model that's available. So here I've got the Free Sky version. There's also a Fly Sky and a DSM 2 DSM X version available as a bind and fly. But now there's also a ready to fly that comes with a Fly Sky FSI 6 radio, which is a good starter radio, especially since it's really only about 20 to $25 difference to get started, that makes that thing a steal. I like the Fly Sky radio. I think it's a good starter radio. A lot of times it's $45 to $50. And I was like, well, it's okay, but I'm a Tyrannus guy. For $25, man, that is a great way to get started. If this is a good model, that will make that a great combination. But alas, I've got the Free Sky version here. Yes, I said alas. It's such a happy model. Actually, look at the manual this thing comes with. Holy cow. This is one of the nicest models. Oh, look, a breakdown, kind of like we see for the RC cars. They always include these kind of breakdowns. I don't see that often. With part numbers for all the parts, that's pretty cool. I wonder if they're available. Here are the stats. It's an 85 millimeter model. It's 59 grams with an F4 processor. That's pretty sweet. 1102 9000 kV motors. So they're pretty small. Maybe two inches will fit on there. We'll see. 2S400 milliamp is what it comes with, is recommended. Oh, and it already ships with Betaflight 3.2, which is nice, even though 3.3 just dropped. And a built in buzzer. We're not going to go into all of the details here, but it's a really, really nice breakdown of all the parts, all the connectors. So often I'm happy if I just get a printout with the shows the layout of the flight controller. Man, this is really sweet. You don't need me to go into the detail that I do sometimes for this. It includes everything you need in order to get started. I wonder if the ready to fly includes everything here too. I might have to see about picking one of those up. Yeah, everything you need for all of the different versions, which is really nice. So you do get an extra set of props, which is nice. You get a battery in here, which I'm actually gonna start with so I can go stick it on the charger. It's a Happy Model brand, which it's basically a Happy Model sticker. I doubt if they make this. 30C, so it's a JST connection. I guess we'll just kind of find out how it works. At 9,000 kV motors, you probably can't put a 3S on this. So for the model here, we've got the receiver in the back. I'm a little nervous about that. That looks like it would be awfully easy to catch that antenna to make sure that's facing down. There's the bind button when we turn it on. Good angle to the camera from the looks of it. Make sure the antenna's up and out of the way, but not contacting the frame if possible. It is really, really light. Now it looks to me like there's enough room there to fit four inch props on it. We'll, uh, we might, not four inch props, two inch props on it. I really dig the green aluminum and how it's holding everything together. It is one plate here, but that's pretty thick. There's not much give in there. I would think that's going to be really durable. The bottom plate is plenty thick. The top plate's not as thick, but it's small. Other than this weird piece sticking off the back where the buzzer is, I could see that breaking. It's a really small, really clean build. I kind of like that. It would be easy to change out this receiver if it doesn't turn out to be good. But let's take a look at what we've got in beta flight. So because I'm just connecting USB, I don't worry about taking the props off. The motors shouldn't be able to spin up, but it does light up the receiver, which is nice. So we'll be able to bind and test that. I haven't done that yet though. So it thinks it's a little crooked, and I guess it was. It's sitting on the Velcro strap underneath. So under ports, we're using UART1 for serial RX, nothing else special there. I'm gonna leave it mostly stock, but I may make some changes for my preference. We'll see. Motor stop is on, D-Shot 600, 800, 800, accelerometers on, S bus, it's named. This looks really good. Okay, here's the first thing I see is there are no dynamic filters or anti-gravity on, so we'll do that. The alarm is probably default. Yes, it is. Oh. No, the warning cell voltage was at least lowered. The minimum cell voltage for cutoff was not, but the warning was, so that was nice. They even set that. PID tuning, have they done anything here? No, they haven't. So this is stock. They don't have the full dynamic filters enabled. I'm not gonna turn this on yet until I can fly it and make sure everything's okay. Those are definitely some custom PIDs though. Receiver is TAR set up and ready to go for me. Modes, I'm gonna just move angle. It's pretty close. Pretty darn close for me. So I want angle and horizon. Beeper on three, that all looks good. Air mode is really close to where I want it. I, I like the setup, it was definitely usable. It doesn't quite fit my preference, but it's really, really close. OSD looks acceptable. I'm gonna turn on my one 
thing that I love, average cell voltage, because I change around and do this testing with different size batteries all the time. That average cell voltage is a lifesaver, so I don't have to figure out, especially when I'm on a five or six S, what I'm supposed to be at. So it is an Omnibus F4 SD. It's a really tiny one. It is running 3.2, so everything should be okay there. So I will go through and set up a new model here. And because I am using TAER, we'll be fine with a drone and just page through. I will go into all the detail on this one because I think some people will probably be using this that are newer. It seems like it's gonna be a good model for that. Okay, so here's one. I won't show Pinky look at everyone, but to make it capitalize, you hold down the enter. I still find some people don't know that. There it's named, and I'll say that is the one place where I really love the knob on the QX7 and the Horus. So much faster to set the name with a knob. It does say this is a D8 receiver, so make sure we select that. And with a D8 receiver, we don't have to set the failsafe mode. We're gonna go to inputs. So I'm gonna use for five. These are just my preferences. Select, and then I'll flip this switch, which will automatically select it. That's my arm switch. Do the same thing for my mode switch, flight mode switch. Three is my buzzer that I use over here out of the way so I don't accidentally hit it. And the new one I've started using, flip over after crash, just when I need it. Then I go in here and hopefully that'll work with the RSSI. I'm not sure, that might be a problem. Hmm, I don't know, we'll find out, I guess. So then we just enter and exit, enter and exit, enter and exit, enter and exit. If I was flying this permanently, like this was your only drone, I'd go ahead and name these for what they are, but I go through so many of these that I'm not gonna bother. Really, that's it, that's all you gotta do. So now I will hold down the bind button here, plug in the USB on the other side because it's way easier to do that with one hand. So that should have set this in bind mode. Now on the radio, we'll turn that so you can see it. Go to bind. I might actually be too close. Oh, there we go, the light went out. That looked good. If they're too close to one another, sometimes it can't get good signal and sometimes it won't work. So then we'll reboot everything. Exit out of here. We should, there we go, it arms, you hear it arm, now it won't turn the motors because we don't have a battery connected, but that works. Okay, it is really windy, so I'm curious to see how this goes. That looks good, and we have a horizon mode, it's so little. Why is my battery, it's already beeping at me. Huh, is that the low voltage warning? Something must be wrong with that. If I do horizon mode, let's have that for a minute. Let's try horizon. The controls look good. <laughs> yeah, that's the stock battery. I wonder if that one's just no good. Let's try acro mode. That looks okay. I don't think the voltage is really that low. I will uh, put on the goggles so I have OSD what it shows there it looks pretty good other than the beeping ooh 5.7 for the minimum cell voltage these batteries must just not be very good yeah there's gonna be beeping at me all I'm doing is hovering it so let's just try another battery okay I had to take this out with another set of goggles just to see if the camera problem was actually with my goggles and oh see look at that everything I said about the camera uh, I think was wrong so here now the camera looks really good I just have a bad set of goggles I'm testing whole different bird now so I'm gonna keep some of that footage but uh, yeah I'm gonna refilm the end part that I did too because this now is pretty nice yeah, I like it. Wow. Okay. 
redo the whole end. I'm gonna show you, so here, this is actually, I'm gonna show you this first, and then I'm gonna go back and show you some of the other footage uh, so you can see the problem I had with the camera, but it's definitely not, uh, not the camera. It was just those goggles, because this looks, the light is great, the video is great. Overall, battery, it still eats batteries. This is a good battery, this is the 550 that I'm flying with, not the stock one, which is total garbage. But this little thing is sweet. Oh man, wish I had time for more. But that's it, that's all my updates, but I want to at least test it again. Just because I had a theory that my problem was my goggles and not the drone. Yeah, that's much better. Let's go re-record that ending. And you watch some of my footage from the other day. Just totally ignore everything I said about the camera. So this is a GNB 550 battery. It's actually one of, from one of the Fly Egg models. And you can see here the light adjustments on this are not good. And range is okay. I crashed it on the last one, and I was probably 100 meters away, upside down. Didn't not because I lost telemetry. Um, we'll see. I get an air here, let's get a little lower. That's not bad, I mean, that's 100 meters, and I'm still at 40, RSSI turn around. Low. So there we go, we get an air, that's about 120, 125 meters. The model itself is fairly quick, but look, I can't even see the ground there. It, um, control of it is really good, so if you get this, I mean, it's got good control, it's, it seems to sink with glass, it doesn't float very well, I've gotten used to heavier models. Than this, there's a little bit of crap walk, but I'll get rid of that. It's super windy though, it's super windy out here. I don't know if you can hear me. Honestly, I don't even notice that crazy wind. I mean, it's small. I like the I like the size of it. I like the size a lot, and I like the way it flies. I have really good control over it. The size is really nice. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. Let's not try that. Now I'm going to try it again. But I'm going to cheat. Boy, oh, but the, maybe with this wind, it's not a good plan. There we go. I've always wanted to do that. I'm going in because my hand is frozen. This battery is terrible. Look at this. 70%. 8 volts. And it wouldn't fly. As soon as I put any load on it at all, it just beep, beep, beep. And that was after I turned it down. That's unfortunate. That was just garbage. And the rest of the model, I like it. So I like the way it flies. I like the size. It's pretty cool for really short range. I actually kind of like this receiver. I like having the RSSI telemetry that you get with D8 versus if this was an XM receiver. Now that I've actually tried this with a proper set of goggles, it works just fine. All the camera issues I had just went away. Ironically, the DVR actually looked better on the first day, but the video in my eyes looked a lot better when I was out yesterday. I think the only problem with this thing may be now the props. These are not good props, so I think some 2-inch props on this could make a big difference, so that's actually the question I have for you. Do you like this model and do you want me to spend some more time on it? Because it flies really nice. That wind was so crazy I couldn't use most of the footage that I recorded. It was just nothing but static. The part you did hear was just what worked. But this didn't seem to care. It just flew around and it didn't even notice. My hands did, but this didn't because it was cold. But I think with a little bit of tuning and some different props, this could be a great little model. It's just a nice little size that we haven't seen much. It's barely bigger than a tiny whoop. So if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below and let me know what you want to see done to this. New props, full tuning, ignore and move on. Let me know. I'll even throw a poll up in the corner to make it official. So until next time, remember, as I was coming back inside, I looked over and noticed my neighbor was walking around in shorts and a t-shirt in his bare feet on the concrete. So yeah, it's cold. I swear it's cold.